Hello everybody. I am Dr. Devdatta Das, Assistant Professor at Bardhaman University, West Bengal. I shall deal with the topic Restorative Justice and Victims of Crime. <clears throat> First, I would like to introduce you to the topic. Restorative justice reflects a balanced justice delivery system where equal justice to offenders and victims is ensured. Uh, restorative justice focuses on restoration of the victim with the community instead of punishing the offender. Mark Umbrett holds that restorative justice provides a very different framework for understanding and responding to crime. Under restorative justice, parties who have a stake in the offence come together collectively to resolve the offence and deal with its consequences and implications for the future. Restorative justice is one of the most significant developments in criminal justice practice and criminological thinking to emerge over the past two decades. Norwegian criminologist Nils Christie during late 1970s argued Restorative practices were fairly normal responses to crime and divines until the early Middle Ages. Gradually, these practices were replaced by a centralized state power that managed the system of punishment. Restorative justice aims to support victims as it enables voluntary participation of the victim in the process. The offender gets a chance to make good the loss suffered by the victim apart from suffering the punishment. So it can be observed that the focus of criminal justice system which was traditionally towards accused shifted to victims within restorative justice process. The term restorative justice was coined by Albert Eglash in 1977 in his article Beyond Restitution creative restitution. The idea of justice referred by him was not new and such concepts of justice existed in history. John Braithwaite observed restorative justice has been the dominant model of criminal justice throughout most of human history for all the world's people. The principles guiding restorative justice are as follows. The victim is the most important aspect of the whole process. The interaction among the victim, offender and the community is enhanced through various means, emphasizes the need to hold the offender accountable for the act committed against the victim and the community at large. It recognizes the role of the community in bringing justice to the victim. Restorative justice tries to bring about a productive interaction between the offender and the victim. It sees the concerned issues from social perspective. It adopts a problem solving approach in each case. It is flexible in practices. Restorative justice versus conventional criminal justice system. In the opinion of Zare, restorative justice can be contrasted against conventional criminal justice system on the following grounds. Crime under conventional criminal justice system is defined as violation against the state, while in case of RJ, it is violation of one person by another. Conventional criminal justice system focuses on establishing blame, guilt, past, etc., while restorative justice is more focused on problem solving, liabilities and obligations, future, etc. Conventional criminal justice system imposes pain to deter or prevent, but restorative justice adopts restitution as a means of restoring the goals of both the parties. In case of traditional criminal justice system, community is kept on the sidelines and the matter is completely represented by the state. But in case of RJ system, the community acts as a facilitator in restoration process. Under conventional criminal justice system, action is directed from state to offender, while in RJ process, it involves the victim and the offender in course of doing justice. Traditional criminal justice system involves the stigma of crime unlike in case of restorative justice where it is considered to be repairable. Unlike restorative justice process, traditional criminal justice system does not encourage repentance and forgiveness. 
aims of restorative justice. It seeks to place greater emphasis upon the victim of crime and the wider community. Shift in focus where crime are no longer viewed as a wrongdoing against a remote and impartial state, but against individuals, specific victims in specific contexts. Emphasizes the importance of repair or reparation by the offender to the victim or more broadly to the community. Involves individuals, families and community members in understanding and addressing the harm caused to the victim or family and community by the crime, wrongdoing and together finding appropriate responses. It aims to empower the victims by providing them with a forum in which their voices are both heard and respected. In a paper, Restorative Justice, a discussion paper, Belgrave explained that there are three stages at which formal restorative justice programs are generally applied. They are pre-conviction, such programs operate when the defendant does not deny guilt or do not intend to defend the case. Pre-sentence, such programs operate on admission or proving of guilt. Post sentence, certain victim offender mediation programs operate with the convicted offenders who have been put to community based sentences or to imprisonment. History According to Constantine, biblical justice was restorative, so too was justice in most of the indigenous cultures. In pre colonial New Zealand, Maori had a fully integrated system of restorative justice. It was the traditional philosophy of specific nations such as Tonga, Fiji and Samoa in pre-Normer Ireland, restorative justice was interwoven with the fabric of daily life. Braithwe argues that restorative justice is grounded in traditions of justice from the ancient Arab, Greek and Roman civilizations that accepted a restorative approach even to homicide. He continues with a large sweep of human history, citing the public assemblies of the Germanic people, Indian Hindu traditions in 600 to 2000 BC and ancient Buddhist, Taoist and Confucian traditions. And he concludes that restorative justice has been the dominant model of criminal justice throughout most of the human history for the entire world's people. Restorative justice programs. Restorative justice can be expressed through a wide range of policies and practices directed toward offender and crime victims such as victim support and advocacy, restitution, compensation, community uh, mediation, circle sentencing, family group conferencing, community boards that meet with the offenders to determine appropriate sanctions, victim empathy classes for offenders and community policing. The following are the different restorative justice processes or techniques adopted to ensure compliance with the fundamental elements of restorative justice in the course of delivering wholesome justice. Victim offender mediation. Under VOM programs, trained mediators guide the victim and offender to talk about how the crime affected them. Share information develop a mutually satisfactory written restitution agreement and develop a follow-up plan thus enabling the victim and offender to complete the core restorative process. Circles. Circles are similar to victim offender mediation but apart from offender and victim their family members, community members and government representatives are also part of it. As discussed in the United Nations Handbook on Restorative Justice programs uh, in 2006, in circle sentencing, the participants who include the judge, defense counsel, prosecutor, po police officer, the victim and the offender and their respective families and community residents sit face to face in a circle. Circle sentencing is generally only available to those offenders who plead guilty. In circle sentencing, factors like the need to protect the community, the needs of the victims and the rehabilitation and punishment of the offender are considered while discussing the issue. 
In Circle Sentencing Community Justice Committee, that CJC, is formed that may also include representatives from justice agencies. The CJC plays an integral role in the overall circle process, including uh, liaising with criminal justice agencies, community organizations, as well as with the various stakeholder groups in the community. Cases are referred to CJC generally from the police, prosecutors and judges, although cases may also come from the schools, victim service programs and families. Talking circles, peacemaking circles or healing circles are associated with the traditional practices of North America, Canada and among various tribes of Native Americans of US. In healing circles, members sit in a circle and the circle starts with a prayer by the person who convenes the circle or in case where an elder member is involved by the elder. In this process, a talking stick is held by the person who speaks. Other sacred objects like eagle feathers and fans may also be used. On completing the speech, the talking stick is passed to the next person on the left, allowing the next person to speak. The circle is considered to be complete once the stick is passed around the circle and no one speaks out of turn. Talking circle fosters deeper listening and reflection in conversation. Healing circles are also known as hokoka in the Lakota language. It means a sacred circle or altar in hokoka people sit together in a talking circle praying and help one another to heal each other. Healing circles have been used for recovery from social evils like alcoholism in aboriginal communities. Peacemaking circles use traditional circle ritual and structure to create a respectful space in which the crime victim, victim supporters, offender, offender supporters, judge, prosecutor, defense counsel, police, court, workers and all interested community members can speak in a shared search for understanding the event at issue. Participants also identify the steps necessary to address the harm caused by the offense and to prevent future occurrences. The peacemaking circle process typically involves several steps that lead to the sentencing. An application by the offender to the circle process is followed by the creation of a support system for the offender and a support system for the victim. Other steps are a healing circle for the victim and healing circle for the offender. These steps are then followed by the sentencing circle. After the sentencing circle, there may be follow-up circles at appropriate intervals to review progress on the sentencing agreement. The circle process is not simply a process for finding more appropriate justice. It is an exercise in building community because it brings community members together in a forum that allows exploration of the underlying causes of crime and encourages each community member to offer gifts or capacities to the process of finding solutions and implementing them. The circle process allows full expression of emotions and channels the energy of those emotions towards positive solutions. In the circles, decisions are based on consensus and everyone involved must agree that the decision is one with which they can live. Circles draw on the life experiences of all the participants to understand the problem at hand and to devise workable solutions. Peace committees was first used in Zwilithamba, South Africa. These committees have two objectives, peacemaking that is solving the dispute in local community and peace building that is solving more generic problems in the community. They are very similar to sentencing circles and healing circles as they are closely embedded in the community and involves community participation and adopt a deliberative participatory way with certain differences. The peacemakers under this system are local volunteers who are licensed and must respect a code of written good practice. Further, these peacemaking forums deal with the specific events before being defined as offences by the police or the judicial system. These committees try to find specific answers to specific events and also provide an opportunity to upgrade the community. Conferencing programs. They are more associated with criminal justice system than compared to VOM or circles. Apart from involving offenders and victims directly, it includes others as well. It involves victim, victim supporters and offender supporters, family members and significant others on the restorative process. 
community re reparative boards. The community reparative board is a recent version of a much older and more widespread community sanctioning response to youth crime generally known by such terms as youth panels, neighborhood boards or community diversion boards. Reparative boards typically are composed of a small group of citizens intensively trained to conduct face-to-face -face meetings with offenders ordered by the court to participate in the process. The boards develop sanction agreements with offenders, monitor compliance and submit compliance reports to the court. Victim Offender Panels Unrelated victims and offenders linked by a common kind of crime but not by the particular crimes are brought together. VOPs provide an opportunity for indirect encounter when either the victim or the offender is unwilling or unable to meet the other. It gives an opportunity for the parties to speak about their experiences. Victim Assistance Programs VAP render services to victims after recovering from the crime and during the course of moving through the criminal justice process. Victim assistance programs are suggested to serve the following purposes. To provide legal representation to the victims of crime. To provide victims physical and psychological needs. To help victims reintegrate into the society. Ex-offender assistance. These programs provide services to offenders while they are in prison and on their release. These programs help to develop prisoners' capacities to enable them to function in the community. They enable the prisoners to make transition from institutionalization to community membership, from stigmatized offender lacking social capital to restored individual possessing marketable skills. Restitution. Under restitution, offenders are made to repay the victims generally through monetary payments but sometimes in kind as well. In its traditional sense, restitution has been defined as a monetary payment by the offender to the victim for the harm reasonably resulting from the offence. Restitution can embody both monetary payments and in-kind services to the victim. According to Black's Law Dictionary, restitution is an act of restoring, restoration of anything to its rightful owner, the act of making good or giving equivalent for any loss, damage or injury and indemnification. Community Service These programs require offenders to address the indirect harm to a community caused by the crime by performing unpaid work that benefits the community. Community Service developed as part of the probation. A basic question that concerns community service is whether the community truly ever is a victim and if so, whether community service actually makes good the community losses. Some have answered in the affirmative, posting that community is a secondary victim that is indirectly injured by crime. For example, the community suffers psychological injury from the fear of crime and more tangible injuries such as rising insurance costs. Others argue that the harm suffered by the community as a result of crime are too intangible to calculate and consequently the service imposed is arbitrary. So community service orders must clarify the nature and extent of the harm done to the community. This requires identifying clearly the relevant community injured, the particular harm inflicted and service to be ordered which will specifically and directly repair the harm inflicted by the crime. Victim Compensation Funds These provide payment to victims by the government or another party unrelated to the offender. The amount of payment is based on the nature and extent of the harm received. Restorative justice in India. The Indian socio-cultural structure contained informal mechanisms like caste panchayats and other social groups to settle the dispute among conflicting parties. Justice delivered by these bodies was accepted by all and the interest of the victims was considered supreme. The offenders were asked to compensate or restore the harm done to the victim in many cases. Subsequently, changes in the socio-political structure replaced the traditional functioning of the justice delivery system.
with rise in crime, informal mechanism of settling the disputes weakened, with time, the police and courts have made the inroads in these areas. Criticisms. Rest restorative justice can be criticized on various grounds like victim's perspective, offender's perspective, criminal justice system perspective, community perspective, human rights perspective, etc. Let us discuss the criticism of restorative justice from victim's perspective. Mechanism of restorative justice from victim's perspective is subject to the following criticisms. Position of victims in serious offenses. The public and victims generally support the restorative justice model but are very reluctant to accept it in cases of serious crimes. Angry victims refuse to reconcile or restore their relationship with the offender. Many victims will opt for a healing process and measures that will help distance them from the offender. For self-protection, they refuse to take part in any form of participation in the social reintegration of the offender. Victims can experience power imbalance. Restorative justice has been much criticized for its potential to replicate and perpetuate power imbalances already existing between victim and the offender. Restorative interventions are said not to address issues of structural inequality and oppression which victims may experience, especially where they have a prior relationship with their offenders. In reviewing the op operation of sentencing circles in Canada and conferences in Australia, observe that it has been observed that power and coercion may operate within informal structures to re-victimize the victim. Next, risks to the rights of victim. Restorative justice promises to victims repair, healing, an opportunity to narrate their stories and ask their questions. However, the rights of victims are subject to certain risks like coercion to participate, threats to personal safety, offender bias proceedings, and a lack of information about what to expect from the proceedings. However, restorative justice may leave victim without a remedy if the offender does not agree on restitution. Given the value placed on restitution by victims, this kind of failure may result in overall distrust of the process to respond to, the, uh, to victims' particular needs. Next, concept of good and bad victims. Some victims have merciless and punitive attitudes which do not get affected by anything by an offender does. But for the vast majority of victims, their badness is proportionate to the emotional harm they have suffered. Good victims may not have suffered as seriously and their needs may not reap the potential benefits that the process of restorative justice encounters. Bad victims usually need the kind of satisfaction that a remorseful offender can offer. Next, response to small number of victims. For numerous reasons like victims may not report the crime to the police, the police may not find the offender, the offender may not be arrested, the prosecutor may not pursue the case or the case may never make it to trial, victims do not participate or enter the formal criminal justice system to resolve the issues causing their victimization. Since restorative justice depends upon an arrest, an official complaint or a criminal justice disposition to trigger the restorative justice process, only a small number of victims are able to reap its benefits. Even those restorative justice programs which do not strictly operate within the criminal justice system at least require the offender to admit some culpability. Thus, the number of such cases eligible for restorative justice is limited. It ignored the critical needs of victims. The experience of a victim in restorative justice program is often very complicated. Addressing the needs of a restorative justice process requires long-term sophisticated counseling, assistance with safety planning, etc. A large number of social services may be required to rebuild a life. Many, if not most of these needs cannot be met by individual offenders or other stakeholders who participate in restorative justice processes because there is not much they can do. It's difficult to achieve a sincere apology for the victim. It is said that in most cases, the victim wants symbolic reparation, primarily an apology. 
But according to another philosophy, the desire of most victims is something beyond just apology. Fundamentally, victims want a sense of vindication for the wrong done to them and they want the offender to stop harming and hurting them or other people. In research on violent offences, for example, Cretney and Davis opined, victim has an interest in um, punishment, not just restitution or reparation, because punishment can reassure the victim that he or she has public recognition and support. It is important to distinguish between two types of apologies, an ideally typical apology where there is forgiveness for the offender from a victim and a sincere apology where there is mutual understanding between the parties and the offender is honestly sorry. However, there is no assumption of forgiveness. This distinction is important because a sincere apology may be expected in a restorative justice process, but it should not be expected from the victim to forgive the offender. Next, offender oriented not an exception to restorative justice. Even though restorative justice processes are often referred to as victim centered restorative justice programs are still very offender oriented. Restorative justice process is limited to those cases where the offender admits his culpability and volunteers to participate in the process. The remedies too are subject to what the offender and the community has to offer. A more victim oriented response would include victims need to repair the harm caused by crime in other words to be restored as much as possible. Restorative justice processes currently can occur with or without the victim as long as the victim's perspective is represented by someone. To conclude, restorative justice is a philosophy which gives society a different way to look at crime and the criminal justice system. According to Zare, restorative justice is a process to involve to ex the extent possible those who have a stake in the specific offence and to collectively identify and address harms, needs and obligations in order to heal and put things as right as possible. The, the United Nations ECOSOC Experts Committee adopts restorative justice basic principles in 2002 and there it defined the term as restorative justice is a process whereby all the parties with a stake in the particular offence come together to resolve collectively how to deal with the aftermath of the offence and its implications for future. Restorative justice has not yet changed the basic course of criminal justice system. It has proven to be a more effective alternative to prison or other forms of punishment, but it can produce mitigated results in terms of victim participation and reparation for injury. Restorative justice has great potential for the parties involved and for the community. However, it is not the magic solution to all evils. It remains an option for some crimes in some circumstances and under some conditions. The restorative justice model will again legitimize if victims needs are placed in the forefront and it succeeds in mobilizing all of the players in the justice system, victim support groups in particular. The community will never embrace and participate in restorative justice unless it understands its purpose and its aims. In the present day structure of piling cases, dearth of judicial officers, procedural complications of the system, restorative justice is definitely a very welcome alternative involving not only VOM, circles, conferencing, etc., but various other unique and modern approaches of ADR, local dalits, etc. Thank you.